Welcome back to the show. Now, apart from the many things that Ivy and Juhi Chege do together as sisters, there's one more thing that binds their relationship, and that is art and business, as evidenced by Riri Jewelry and its continued rise. So, what's the story behind this allure? My name is Ivy Nyagodi Cheke. I'm the head designer at Riri Jewelry. My job involves um, coming up with the designs and seeing the designs through the whole design process from conceptualizing the idea to when it's a complete piece that's wearable. The Riri design process starts from coming up with an inspiration. It could be anything, it could be a person, it could be a building, it could be something from nature. It's limitless what your inspiration is. I'll take you through one of the collections we did, um, which was inspired by Lamu. And what we do is we set out and get all the information we can get on Lamu. So we went to the libraries, got information, got pictures from the internet, anything we could find on Lamu. And we come back with all the information we got and um, derive shapes and learn everything there is to know about the place. When we get the, all the information we've collected, we'll also collect images that are characteristic to Lamu. And what we do is when we collect everything, as you can see here, we come up with sketches of shapes we derived from the artifacts. Like if you see this, it looks like um, a Lamu door. This comes from here and this is from this door. So when we look at this, we try and envision the jewelry shapes and how we'll join, what materials will we use to create, say, the square, how will we incorporate brass, how will we incorporate the beads, like this small dot could end up being a bead. This, this square could be made out of bone, brass, um, so that's how we look at it. Then we come up with the, um, the preliminary sketches. Um, once we are done with the preliminary sketches, we, we sit together and go through them and decide on the ones we'll take up and the ones we'll drop, what can we add, how can we make it better, do away with some, um, come up with the final um, sketches, detailed sketches. So these are the final sketches we did for the Lamu collection. But um, we're not just trying to sell you a piece. We're trying to sell you a story and something that's gone through our process. When someone asks you, what are you wearing, you can tell them, you can back it up and tell them, this is from the inspired by Lamu, and it has a story behind it. So when we're done with the sketches, we come up with um, other sketches with dimensions so that we can give them to the respective uh, artisans mm -hmm. so that they can understand the dimensions um, and make it easier for them to create what we are envisioning. The processes we use have been passed down from generations, um, like beadwork, and actually most of the people I've learned from are from the older generation. And some of the processes we use, like casting, some of these processes date back to the 
13th century but the process has just changed or improved and this is what we incorporate in our jewelry. Riri jewelry really means intrinsic God-given beauty um, in Kikuyu. So we were looking for a representation of what we're trying to do with our work. The company is a socially conscious organization and what we're doing is investing in economic empowerment of young people and also trying to showcase the amazing work that we have young people doing now. We work with a core team of about 12 artisans, um, plus our head designer and myself, and we get designs that you know, are young, are interesting, are fun, and so far have been able to sell them not only in Kenya, but as well as the States, um, Europe, through a website called sapel.com, which is an African boutique. Uh, at the time I was living in New York, working with the UN, and we were doing a lot of work with young people, and um, there's a lot of energy happening with blogs or music, arts, um, so I just wanted that urge of being able to do something from idea phase to execution phase. Economic empowerment is really important for humans to be able to sustain themselves. Um, you find poverty brings so many problems, you know, you're, you're always looking for something, you don't have access to food, you don't have access to education, while un unfortunately in the world we live in, which is capitalistic, um, that's the way things are. So having access to finance then will enable you to get a better education, access to clean water, healthcare, um, so you look, conflicts are motivated by uh, lack of access to either power or water or you know water wars um, negative ethnicities so issues of identity so for me i thought it would be important to think of ways to not only empower myself but also a network of people i knew who are young like me and who had amazing skills that were so inspiring. Um, another thing I thought of jewelry is because once I used to wear things that I've bought from the market, like beaded earrings, um, when I'm away or outside Kenya, people are like, where did you get that? What is that made from? So there was like a natural pool by Kenyan jewelry um, that people are always interested in. So then I thought it would be easier to market it because people already think of it as wow. So for me, I wanted to combine uh, what I studied, which is peace building, and this new thing that will give me an outlet for energy, which is um, jewelry making. Our inspiration is local. It's about our people. It's about our food, about our festivals. And something I find very interesting about Kenya is that it's so dynamic. Every weekend you have people who, who are dressing up to go for weddings. There's the whole notion of community and collaboration. So when I think of Africa for me, I think of those elements of collaboration, community, festivity, happiness, laughter. And so it was easy for Riri to capture the Africanness, although Africanness is a hard concept because it's so broad. Last year in August and September, we had the opportunity to represent our work at a trade show. And really was such a core attraction for the show because of the stories behind our work. And you find our stories are so special because everything comes from a source that you can pinpoint. And right now there's a huge shift that's happening um, all over the world in how Africa is, or Africans are trying to exert their story and change the mindsets of the world on how they view us. And 
also how we as Africans are transforming how we've been thinking about ourselves. We think of ourselves as savvy business people, as professionals, as highly skilled, as interesting. And that, I think, is what is happening with many other young people who are doing other amazing things, whether it's in TV shows, or running blogs, or making clothes, or writing. Getting the product to the person has been a really interesting journey because then you get to see people's different reactions. Uh, the way we've approached marketing has been through mainly social media and the impact of you know technology has been amazing in getting our little company accessible to people in you know around the world. For us one of the main strategies beyond social media has been going for shows um, internationally in Kenya as well. Um, in Kenya we've been able to participate at uh, Festival for African Fashion and Arts which uh, promotes peace as well um, and they have a, a dynamic way of packaging the, the artists who show on their platform. Um, we've also had the opportunity to um, go for the hub of Africa in Ethiopia um, and trade shows are amazing. I think I'd encourage um, other designers to be able to find sh spaces where buyers are going and then be able to showcase their work because then that way you're not only um, selling locally and showing clients who are around you but you'll, you'll be able to expose your work to other people from all over the world. So I think travel offers a contrast for you to understand your identity better and when you're doing that then even in the design process you're able to remember elements that maybe people in a certain place like um, people what they enjoyed about which material or which element or which story which then translates in how you market hopefully i hope to be able to also inform policy and bringing a lot of knowledge to the creative economy. How can we be able to create a substantial economy um, that arts and culture can be considered a key player? Because you find we have that talent, we have the skills, but arts and cultures don't make a great impact on the Kenyan economy. We're not even at 10%. And if you look at countries like France, like Italy, it's the artisans who are the big players in that industry. We have to change our mindset about arts and culture um, into something that can be a powerful vehicle for really developing the country. If you look now at Hollywood even, or Nollywood, it's the actors, it's the whole industry of makeup, of hair, of nails, that is really driving it. If you look at even cars, the design of the cars, um, it's still art and creativity. So I think the beauty of being in that space now as a young Kenyan is that there's a whole lot of potential for you to think about creativity. As young people, life is like a, a piece of art because every day you're creating your own reality and trying to move beyond what you know as normal. And I think that's always fun because this is the best time to be young in Kenya with technology, with M-Pesa, with you know, the digital migration. Like, it's limitless what you can do. So I tell young people, whatever your skill is in or your interest is in, um, it's about just thinking about what you want to do with it and then approaching someone who can help you or even think of ways yourself that you can challenge yourself to design and create something.